thank you, God, for another day, Lord, that you've allowed us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings, Lord, you've bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity to stand and look into your word one more time. We pray, God, as we look into the word, Lord, that you would be the one who comes, that you would present a message, God. Pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us. Help us, God, to take it and use it, Lord. Help us to apply it to our lives that we can become that, that you would have us to be. Lord, I give myself to you. I pray, God, you would just use me for your purposes, for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, we're on a, we're on a journey. When uh, we were born again, you can kind of look at it as we got on a ship. And that ship is sailing to a destination. Everybody knows that that destination is heaven someday. But we didn't get on that ship as passengers. We're the sailors. We're the workers. We've got the greatest captain in the fleet. But let me ask you a question. I want you to think about this. If physically there was a ship and they had the greatest captain in the fleet, but the sailors were shirkers, and the sailors didn't do their job right, or the sailors only did their job half the time, suppose the guy who was in charge of the engines only checked on them once a week. There could be a huge problem, an engine could blow up, an engine could catch on fire, an engine could quit. Suppose the guy who was in charge of the galley never stocked the cupboards. People could end up going hungry, people could end up starving. It doesn't matter how good the captain is, if the crew doesn't do his job, should that ship be taking on passengers? I don't think so. It'd be putting those passengers in danger. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's the same with the church. We've got the greatest captain. But if the crew isn't doing its job, we got no business taking on passengers. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I've said a lot over the last little while. We don't got time to play we got to quit playing church and start being the church. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe that a lot of us are still playing church. It's time to take the job seriously. That guy who runs the engines on that ship, he has to keep constant watch on them. He's got to oil the parts that need oil. He's got to maintain whatever uh, needs to be maintained. He's got to do constant maintenance. He's got to keep it in tip-top shape because otherwise the whole ship suffers. That's us. We're the crew. We have got to do what our job is to do. Yes, we've got the greatest captain. But it's not his job to stop the galley. It's not his job to maintain the engines. It's not his job to do all these other things that have to be done. That's why he brought us on board, to do those things. But I, I'm telling you, I believe that the church, this church, Jefferson Church, is not doing its job 100%. I may say some things, I might get blunt, I might get harsh. If I offend you, if I make you mad, if I hurt your feelings or upset you, please don't go away mad. Come and talk to me. I'm only going to give you what I believe that God has given me. There's so much going on in my head, you need to pray for me that God puts this together the right way. I want to ask you a question. How many of you believe in tithing? Amen. Do you believe that's just money? No. no. I believe that's... You go back and read, they had to give up their herbs, they had to give up their animals, they had to give up everything that they had. I believe that includes time. Right. Let's suppose that we believe in tithing, and we believe that includes everything we have. 17 hours approximately a week should be given to God. How many of you give 17 hours a week to God? Totally dedicated, 100% given to God. Not because it benefits you, gets you something, does something for you but given to God. Now that's just the tithe. If you believe in the tithe, you have to believe in what comes afterward. He said, bring your tithes and your offerings. That's over and above the 17 hours. Mm -hmm. So let's give him three more. That's 20 hours a week that you should be given to God. Totally, 100% sold out to God. How many of us do that? Let's go into the New Testament. You know what Paul said? Let every man give as he is able. Not as he wants. Mm -hmm. 
not as the church determines, not as anybody, as he is able. And God knows if you are able. You can make excuses, you can say this, you can say that, but God knows who is able and who is not able. And if we don't give, we don't receive. That's a law of God. And they've taken that twist and turned it in order to preach the prosperity doctrine, but it is the law of God. As a man sows, so shall he also reap. That applies to everything. Depending on how much you give to God, how much God <coughs> will give to you. It works that way. I believe that God requires more than we are given him. I know that God requires more than we are given him. More of our time, more of our self, more of our heart, more of our mind, more of everything that we got. God requires more than we are given him. But the thing that's burning on me this morning is church attendance. Again, back up. Have you tithed the right amount of time? Have you given offering above that time that, that God requires of you, that God asks of you? And you may say, I go to church. You may say, I, I go so every Sunday morning, I go to church. Jason said it in, in Sunday school. Christians should be in the church when the doors are open. It's open more than Sunday morning. And I believe that a Christian ought to be here. And, and you may say, I can't. This is going on. That's going on. Whatever is going on. God knows. You can make every excuse you want to make to yourself, but God knows. Well, I'm sorry I can't go. I stubbed my toe. I got a splinter. Uh, um, my mustache don't look good this morning. I don't want nobody to look at me. That ain't going to fly. As you give, so shall you receive. As you give, so will God give to you. As you give, God will bless. But God requires you to give. I'm telling you, it's a requirement. It's not a suggestion. It's not just something that would be nice. But God requires it of you. He expects it of you. He also said in Sunday school, there are those who will say, well, God understands. Yes, he does. The problem is you don't understand. That's the problem. You can go around here and say God understands. And you're right. God understands. But you have deceived yourself. Right. And you can say whatever you want to say. And you can disagree with me. And you can say you don't know my situation. You don't know my circumstance. No, I don't. But I know God. And I know what the Word says. Amen. Bless you, Lord. And I'm going to say this. And I'm not bragging on me. I can only use what I know. And the only thing I really know is me. I've sat in church when I had a migraine so bad I couldn't think straight and God blessed me right. mm -hmm. I've come to church when my back hurt so bad I couldn't hardly work and you know what God blessed me because I was willing to give so was he he took care of that problem hey I remember sitting there not too very long ago I had a headache like you would not believe God moved on that brother to come over and lay his hands on me and that headache left instantly if I would have stayed home I would have probably had it for 12 14 24 hours who knows? But because I gave, God gave. That's right. That's right. Amen. We'll use any little thing. I'm tired. I gotta get up early. This and that and everything else. What if Jesus would have said, I don't feel like going to the cross today? That's right. Mm -hmm. Where would you be? Amen. Amen. Come on. Listen, this thing takes action. That's right. This thing takes action. That's right. It's not just sitting that we talk about in Sunday school. It's not just about saying the words. Let's show God we mean business. Right. Amen. You don't got to show me nothing. You know what? It don't matter what I think. It don't matter what my opinion is. It don't matter if I stand up here and say these things. What matters is this word says these things. Our God says these things. And we better start listening. Because as I said over and over and over again, it came up. It 
keeps coming up. And there's got to be a reason it keeps coming up. These things don't just happen. God moves in people. They don't even realize they're being used. But God will move in them. It came up in Sunday school. Any branch in me that brings forth not fruit, it will be cut off. It will be cast into the fire. That can pertain to any one of us sitting here. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how good a Christian you think you are. I don't care how many jobs you've got in the church. I don't care how many verses you know. I don't care about any of that. If you ain't bringing forth fruit, Jesus Christ himself said, any branch that bringeth forth not fruit will be cut off right. and will be cast into the fire. It is time to quit playing. It is time to get serious. We don't understand the seriousness of this thing. We've been told so long. Just say the little prayer. Put your money in the plate. Go to church once in a while. Don't cuss, don't drink, don't kick dogs, don't take candy from babies, and you're all right. Uh-uh. We've got to attain to a higher level. That's right. Amen. A higher level. You may wonder why I stopped like that, because I'm listening. Bless you, Lord. Hear me. If you're an officer of the church, if you're an elected official of the church, you've got to go to an even higher level. That's right. That's right. You know why? Because the rest of the membership and the world looks at you as an example of Christ. That's right. And to whom much is given, much is required. That's right. Amen. That's right. What would you think if you came here tonight and I wasn't here? Some kind of pastor we got. What if you came next Sunday morning and I wasn't here? What if you even came Wednesday night and I wasn't here? You wouldn't think too much of me. You begin to talk about me. You begin to think I wasn't very dedicated. I wasn't very committed. You know the rules that apply to me apply to you. That's right. That's right. There are no big eyes and little use. Amen. I got a different job. That's it. That's right. That's right. You got a job too. Mm -hmm. You might not have been elected. You might not have been chosen. You might not have been picked by the membership. But God gave you a job. Your job might be here to amen me so that when I feel like I'm getting down, you amen me, that juices me up again. You might be here just to sit back there in your pew and pray for me when I preach because I need that extra oomph. You've got a job to do, and if you're not here, your job is not getting done. The engines are not functioning properly, and I'm going to tell you something. We can't take on passengers if the ship isn't running right. That's right. If we got a crew that's only working half the time, if we got a crew that isn't taking their job seriously, we can't take on passengers. We talk about getting the community in, about going out and getting people in. I honestly believe it ain't happening yet because the captain knows we ain't ready. I asked you, how would you think if you came here this morning and I wasn't here? And I hadn't told anybody why I wasn't going to be here. There was not, I just didn't feel like it. My daughter got married yesterday and I got tired and I just didn't feel like coming this morning. Mm -hmm. You think God's going to accept that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -mm. If he ain't going to accept it from me, he ain't going to accept it from you either. That's right. That's right. We need to start thinking about these things. It's right. serious right. business. Right. Very right. serious business. And it's time to quit fooling around. And it's time to quit playing around. And yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to tell you. When it comes next election time in this church, when we start electing members, I mean, uh, we started electing officers and things like that, we're going to go back and we're going to read what the requirements are for an officer of the church. That's right. I didn't make them up. That's right. It was in the church founding that any officer or elected official of this church has to be here two-thirds of the time, two-thirds of the services. And I think that's letting them off easy. Mm -hmm. But according to the way this church was founded, if they're not, they can't hold an office. And I'm going to tell you something else. God requires more than that. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to get serious. Amen. We need 
to quit playing around. Right. We need to quit thinking we are all that and we got a soda and we got it made. We need to get down to business with God. Playtime is over. It's time to get busy. It's time to get the ship back in shape. It's time to get it ready to take on passengers. We can't take on any passengers until the crew is ready to take on passengers. Right. You need, we need to understand this. It's been coming out. It's been coming out. And God's been sending it. And God's been sending it. And it worries me. You don't know how much it worries me. I'm afraid he's going to start pruning. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see anybody get pruned. I don't want that to happen. But we need to understand the seriousness. We need to understand that God don't fool around. That God don't play games. Yeah, you got away with it this long. That's just because he's merciful. That's just because he's patient. That's just because he's loving. But I'm going to tell you something. You read the word and you find out. There's a time when his mercy and his patience runs out. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I feel it. We're near that time. Mm -hmm. We are near that time. You've got to understand something. The things God has been sending, the messages, the spirit, the moving, the blessing, the things you've been allowed to hear and see and experience don't happen a lot anymore. God has been good to us. God has been gracious to us. And he expects something in return. That's right. Amen. Go to the book of James. Chapter 2. James chapter 2, beginning of verse 14. What does it profit, my brother, though a man say he has faith? I want to stop right there and define faith. What is faith? It's trusting God to the point that you do what he asked you to do. It's trust. That's what it is. But it's not just trusting in your mind. It's trusting in your actions. Mm -hmm. Listen, he says, what does it profit my brother and a man say he had faith and had not works? That word works, I think a lot of time we misdefine also. What that word means is action. Right. Demonstration. You go back and look at the original meaning. It means action and demonstration. So a man may say that he has trust, but what does it profit? No a man say that he had faith or trust or belief in God and have not action or demonstration of it, can faith save him? It requires action. It's not just saying it. It's not just sitting there and saying, I believe it. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Now listen. There are multitudes around us who are starving, who are naked. I'm talking spiritually. Starving. They're skin and bone, spiritually speaking. They're naked. They need that robe of righteousness. What good would it do if one of us said unto them, oh, you'll be all right, and take no action to help them? Take no action to introduce them to Christ. Take no action to bring them in to the fold, to get them on board the ship. What if we did that? What good would it do them? We have got to take the action. We have got to be the ones who go out and distribute to the need. And I'm not talking about the physical need. That's good if you can do that. But the important thing is the spiritual need. And I'm going to tell you something. We cannot do that until we are repaired ourselves. Until we are in the right place ourselves. We can't bring them on a ship that isn't running right because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen if you bring them on a ship and they see all the problem and they see a lazy crew and they see a crew that doesn't live up to what they've been saying that they're going to do they're going to get off the ship and they're going to go tell everybody else don't get on that ship and what does that do that besmirches Christ That's right. because we're saying he's the captain of our ship we're saying he's the one running this ship. But if the ship ain't running right. Mm -hmm. Listen. What if you invited somebody to church and they came and you weren't here? Mm -hmm. What would they think of you? 
That would not give them much of an incentive to want to come back. That would not give them much of an incentive to believe anything that you said. What if you invited somebody to church and you were witnessing to them, but they saw you talking or acting or doing something that's not becoming to a Christian? That would not give them an incentive. We need more than the talk. We need the action. We have got to get this thing right, and we've got to get it right now. We can't just keep doing the same old, same old. We boozy in here on Sunday morning, and we sit here for a little while, and we go home, and that's it. I'm going to tell you something. God wants the people. I told you my daughter got married yesterday. In the ceremony, I talked a lot about commitment and dedication. Them two people expected the other one to be 